So what I'm going to do today is the worst thing that I ever have to do. This is a Mojave rattlesnake that is caught in some bird netting. And getting this thing out of here is just as dangerous as it looks. I'm not looking forward to it. What happened was a homeowner found this in the bird netting, drove it over to Manny in the West Valley, and then I met up with him yesterday to get this snake. He was able to cut out the really dangerous parts of it to the snake, but um, whatever's left takes a little bit more precision, and I actually really uh, would prefer that my team didn't risk themselves that way. Uh, I do have a lot of experience with this kind of thing, so um, I guess it's me that does this. Here are the tools I'm going to use. A uh, tube to control the front end of the snake, the pointy part with the fangs and the venom, and different things that I can use to manipulate the snake. I'm going to try to not put it in my hands on as much as possible, um, and then I use these long scissors to cut that stuff. So, here we go. So in trying to bite me, this snake has already got its fangs stuck here. Okay, none of that is good. Okay. Try to get the snake in a tube, like that. If I get its head in there, then I have control of the snake. What can become problematic here is if my fingers get caught in this netting too, because then I'm tied to the snake essentially and I can't let go if I need to. That can be pretty dangerous. So we're going to get the snake to go in there and I'm just going to hold it down. One key to this kind of thing is to not rush it. I'm going to take as much time as this takes to do it. I'm not going to make a lot of jerky motions. I am not in a hurry. In fact, the more that this snake kind of gets through that stress hormone and maybe even calms down a little bit, maybe even stops striking, that can definitely help me out. So, yeah, I am not in a hurry. The snake isn't going anywhere. We got lots of time to get this right. Okay. I'm gonna try a different size too. And I am aware too that there's gonna be people that handle rattlesnakes that will critique this and give me their two cents and all that stuff. That's fine. Drop me your number, and uh, next time this happens, you can come over and do this for me. I will gladly let you do that. The reason I'm wearing gloves, you'll see them soon, I'm sure, is because there is venom flying here. I don't want any of it on me. Okay. I have it right there. Normally, with a tube, you would hold on to the body and hold it into the tube that way. Uh, I don't. I can't do that right now. And the reason for that is a couple things. First, the netting is right there. So what would be incredibly dangerous in this situation to have happen would be for my finger to get stuck in a loop of this netting and then I wouldn't be able to pull back if I need to. So what I'm doing is I'm gently holding the tube against the surface to contain the snake 
And if it starts to move or starts to look like it's going to do anything other than sit right there, I'm just going to drop the whole thing and back off. I can drop the scissors, I can drop this whole thing, and the snake can do it again. And we can go through this as many times as I need to to safely cut all this stuff off. Not in a hurry. And you also see that I'm not cutting off the stuff that's on the body right now. The reason for that is I want working space. I want to be able to have as much um, access to the actual snake's body without having all these little hazards. Every one of these little pieces of net that are sitting out here is a way that uh, I can get caught in this situation and not be able to retreat if I need to. So the more I cut away, the better off I am, and the more likely I'll be able to get this snake out of here without any injury to anybody. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start, see if I can get some right off the body here. I think it's distracting to actually be talking my way through this um, and filming this, and that might be a danger. Um, it is not, actually. Don't know if it's just because I'm used to doing a lot of um, educational content. Um, there's something about talking my way through it that helps me focus a little bit. going on here. Okay, now I'm going to wash it because this, some of the stuff where it comes in contact with the body, that's where it starts to hurt the snake. Um, some of this netting may have been on here for days at this point. And it probably doesn't feel good. So if this snake is going to thrash around and try to escape, it's going to be sometime right in here. And I'm just cutting off as much of the stuff as I can to give myself working space. I'll clean this stuff up later. That is a separate issue. Fewer things to tangle. Safer situation for me. Okay, I'm going to go for right here. These scissors are great because I can get in right next to the skin. Let's see if there's anything, any wounds here on this snake. to make sure the scissors don't get stuck in here. I did have that one happen one time where um, I was using scissors and my fingers got caught in the scissors and the scissors got caught in the netting so when the snake started to free itself you know I wasn't stuck but it definitely wasn't as freed up as I wanted to be in that situation. Well, it's possible you might see a little bit of blood when I'm doing this. That's okay. That's not from the scissors. It's from some of the stuff cutting. Uh, any wounds here are going to be superficial.
what we got left here. Okay, now it looks like there's more right here. Let's see. The problem is I'm getting to the point where what I have control over, I can't really see if it's all of it. So I'm going to get everything I can, and we'll see what's next. All right, will this come off? Be very careful to not tangle myself. Okay. Okay, there's a little bit on him. Right there. Hey, I'm working. Do you mind? Okay. Okay, so something over here is hurting him just a little bit. That means it's still on him. I know. Right there. I'm going to push, and, okay, okay, it looks like that's all the netting, is that it? That's all of it, okay, okay, so that actually went pretty well, um, there's no damage on them really, there's a little bit of superficial stuff to the scales right here, um, there's no internal damage, he's not bleeding, or she rather, um, she's got her fang stuck on her jaw here, but she'll be able to correct that as soon as she can get out of here. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong here. So what's going to happen now is this snake is going to, um, I'm going to put it into a different bucket that's clean, um, give some water, and give it about a week to just relax and not stress out. And then um, I'm going to take it back out to the same spot uh, near where it was captured, find an appropriate microhabitat, just like every other relocation, and let this snake go. Um, so you might not be as fond of my fingers as I am. I personally uh, like all my fingers. Also, I like being alive. So next time you're about to put uh, down bird netting um, to keep birds out of an area, please consider my fingers um, in that equation because I don't like doing this, and uh, if I can avoid that at all, um, because a lot of animals get stuck in the bird netting. You have the bird netting there to keep birds out, but so many other animals, and I know you might not like snakes too, but uh, mammals get stuck in there too. Cats get stuck in it and die. Um, all kinds of birds, all kinds of other animals. Um, it is not good stuff, and there's a lot of better ways to do it too. You can use rigid meshes um, that cost about the same, um, actually will last you a lot longer than that plastic nasty stuff. So anyway, I'm going to stop working for the day. I've done enough. <laughs>